Hi, this video is about the significant updates to Cursor's AI First IDE. Uh, they've moved the version to 0.5, which feels significant. There are significant fixes, which we're gonna go into detail in here. Um, and they do have this two minute video, which is the first video on their YouTube channel. It's very light on the details. So we're gonna go into the change log and take a look at those. And we're gonna open up the actual application and I'll show you uh, these features. Um, and they did fix or mostly fix my, my single big, biggest annoyance. That I, and, and I think it uh, it helps them catch up quite a bit to uh, windsurf. There are significant pricing changes, and there are quite a few little things that I think add up to to a lot. So let's uh, let's jump right into it. So first of all, they said simplified unified pricing. They did change the pricing to where it does have a limit, sort of. So uh, the way it looks like unlimited completions, 500 requests per month. Uh, and unlimited slow requests. That's a little bit confu confusing um, at, because before it was just unlimited requests um, and there were, I think it was 500 fast completions and then unlimited completions. So it's unclear the, the verbiage that they're using here, but I think what will happen is you get at this level, you get 500 requests of, uh, of any type and, they, and when you go into here and you look at the actual model, so if we're not doing max, you can see it says 0.75 requests one request that one doesn't have one one request one request so it's per model when i when i use it it'll it'll count as a a request and then i think when i run out of 500 which is quite a bit um i mean you'd have to be or you'd have to be doing using it a lot i think to to get through those but if you get through them all you still it looks like you still get the slow request so you could still essentially have an unlimited they just kind of put it into the back of the queue and you get access to the max mode you know, actually 200 requests per per month on the free is already pretty good, uh, but they've added this kind, of, this kind of limit. Simplified, but also more expensive potentially, uh, or, or more challenging uh, in some ways. Now they've added max mode for all the top models. This is something I don't really use because I think it gets like really expensive really quickly. And I don't think it adds a whole lot more. Essentially, you get a longer context window with the max uh, mode. So if we go into their models right now, this is currently for the regular pricing. And if we click here, you can see you get an increase in the context window, essentially. And I think you can do more tool calls. And so it looks like you can't use Claude 4 Opus without max mode. Um, and you get the higher, so Gemini 2.5 Pro goes up quite a bit. So if you really want it to comb over lots and lots of code, um, then max mode is the way to go about it. I don't think you want to do this in most scenarios just because of the nature of how, even if it can theoretically look at a large amounts of code, the more you give a model to digest, the more chances of errors that you're gonna have, no matter what the metrics say for any of these models. There's also a new tab model, which they uh, use to show within the browser, uh, within the actual application. If I start typing import the actual tab, so it's faster and a little bit more comprehensive. I'm not gonna show all the potential uses for that. I don't use that a whole lot, um, but every once in a while it's nice uh, to have and it looks like they've, they've made improvements. I, I can't really validate that. Now they also have this background agent. So let's actually see what, what it can do in their little uh, demo here. Now you have to go turn it on and I'll show you how to do that in a second. But when you go to turn it on, you'll see that there's some big caveats to it that I personally will keep me from doing it. I don't think it's really necessary to, to, to run this again for my personal use cases. So let's go in and if you go to file uh, preferences, cursor settings, you go to beta. And if I click on this, so a key thing here is it's very new. It's in beta. They're, they're saying here essentially they're not really sure it's secure. That's a big red flag. But then also it only runs in max mode. That's what you see during the cost. So it's gonna get very expensive very quickly. So to me, this would be only if you really, really need it. I mean, you'd have to be, have to be doing tons and tons of AI coding. And to be honest, you don't want even the best models just to kind of run on a loop with coding because it does create significant issues. I like the idea of this and it does seem like it's taking it towards, you can see this is actually the Jules, Google's Jules test project or or like dev in it and it's taking it in that direction to where you can just kind of like hit it and go and it, it can kind of run on a loop. But uh, I, I think we're actually, no matter how good the metrics say with the models, I, I don't think we'll, you, you really want to do that very often for very many things. 
So I, I'm, I'm not gonna turn it on. And on top of it being not secure and very expensive, then that, that definitely eliminates me from wanting to use it. Okay, and now to my favorite update that really makes cursor far more usable. You can essentially tag whole folders, which means you can tag the whole project if you want to. So many times I, while coding, uh, I, in cursor it was like, I'm, I'm, it needs to context from like five things, five, five files. And so I would have every single input to the chat, I would have to tag five files and it just was a pain in the butt. I mean, it seems like, oh, woe is me, but it, it, it's, it's uh, it was a kind of annoying. And actually I think this was a significant difference between this and windsurf. You didn't have to do that in windsurf. Windsurf really understood where to go and what to find what it need, what it needed. But really with this, if you can just tag the whole project, then I think that alleviates it to, to a significant degree. Um, it's unclear if it will be as consistent and find the things at once, but let's assume for right now that they, they know what they're doing on that and, and it, this is a huge time saver. Uh, I still think if you, if you only have like one or two files that you really wanna target, fine. What I'd really like to see is then when I tag something in a conversation for it to just keep that in the next, in the next uh, input. So that way I can tag just the files that are needed, but then I don't have to keep tagging them with every input. Uh, because if you're having a long conversation with it and there's a lot of iteration, then again, that can be a pain in the butt. And I am concerned, you know, as the project gets bigger of tagging, of just having a bunch of stuff in there that might actually distract it. Or it requiring max mode for it to even really do it, do the job at all. Okay, so they've updated the Control-K inline. If I press Control-K, you can see here, um, you can actually edit the full file. So it's a little bit like a variation of the chat. Um, I don't think this is a big deal, but it does seem like it's sort of useful or what you could do is highlight certain code, press control K and send to chat. Quick question, um, they've, they've made it a little bit better overall. Okay, this is something that can't really validate very easily, at least not without a lot of work, but they're saying that uh, it searches and replace within the code of file, uh, the, the code of the file. So it doesn't necessarily have to read the whole code of a file in order to, for it to edit that code. So hopefully this helps with speed and even accuracy and probably even hopefully saves them even some money, which makes the, and them able to add more value in other areas. So um, this seems like a really good idea because I do think that, especially as you get to longer code, you don't, you should, it shouldn't have to read the whole code. Um, there's pro I imagine that there's a pretty reasonable algorithm to kind of figure out what is relevant and what is not. Um, especially using AI models themselves and indexing. And I think Windsurf has done a good job of that. So it looks like they're kind of going in that direction. That's nice. They have this update to work in multiple code bases with workspaces. I don't see myself using this at all. I'm sure there's other people that like this. So if it's for you, great. If not, great. Okay, so something that seems pretty simple, but that is actually is really useful is you can export the chat, um, which before you kind of had to copy and paste it. It didn't work very well. So we can, well, it's not showing up here. We can duplicate the chat. Sorry, the export chat is up here. You can export the chat. Uh, I, I think this is pretty useful and I, I will definitely use this sometimes. I think that sometimes you want to take the conversation and do something with it uh, and maybe put it into a different model or a different place under a different context. And that can be helpful for kind of some of the nasty problems. And then basically with duplicating, you kind of fork the, the conversation. Sometimes you, you want to keep the conversation context, but you want to go here and here and you wanna split it up, or maybe you like where it's at right there and you're not sure if you're gonna go into the right direction. I see myself using the duplicate chat a lot. And then there are a few other little things. So I'll put a link to the Cursor's two minute video. Highly recommend you check that out, um, or at least subscribe to their channel, uh, to their updated pricing and to this change log. Let me know what you think. Do you think this is a big update for Cursor? Uh, is there anything I missed in here? Is there anything in, the, in there, these big updates that you're excited about? Is this enough to get you to switch from Windsurf to Cursor? Uh, I think it, it closed the gap for sure. But anyway, let me know what you think. Please like and subscribe for more videos like this. Hope you have a great day. Bye.